Now, onto the show. Welcome to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. Daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith while build a thriving business that honors Him in every way. Now, over to your host, Anne Marie Cross. Welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode 145, and I'm your host, Anne Marie Cross, the podcasting queen. Now, my guest today says, if there is anything you do in this life, do it in such a way that impacts another person positively. And joining me on today's show is Daisy Mendoza. Now, Daisy has been a professional wedding photographer for 10 years, and she recently delved into the world of media. Dearly was created and launched in the spring of 2018 and shares inspirational stories of women who are using their lives to impact the community and the world. Dearly believes that by highlighting these stories, women will be inspired to rise and desire to live a life that leaves a strong and impactful legacy. Now on today's show, Daisy is going to share the hardships they shape us if we are willing to learn from them. She's going to talk about impossibilities are possible to get through, as well as we have been created to promote the maker and not ourselves or our brands and so much more. So welcome to the show, Daisy. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are so very welcome, Manda. Of course, mm-hmm. we're calling in together and doing the interview from opposite ends of the world, and it's late. Yes. We really appreciate the time that you have taken to share. So share with us a little bit about how you transitioned now into the world of media dearly. Was it something that you felt called to do, or how did that transition for you? Um, it was not something I felt called to do, Um the Lord often calls us to do things that we don't want to do. (laughs) And I love that about him, but it's also something that's really like, you don't really want to do and you want to run away from because you're afraid you've never done anything like that. Mm -hmm. And, but I had a friend tell me that really encouraged me. She said, that's the best place to be is not knowing where you're going the next step um, because it leads you to really trust the Lord, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I think in that often where God does direct us to when we put our confidence and trust in him and faith in him, mm-hmm. he'll often shape our character and we recognize mm-hmm. strengths in ourselves uh, yeah. that we really didn't know existed or areas of um, interest. I think it, uh, is that something that you found exactly. now that you have uh, launched this uh, new new concept? Yes, it it for sure is. Um, When I started collaborating and emailing people to work with me, to interview, to get together and do editorials with, because as a photographer, I already had that skill to collaborate with other vendors and get together and creatively and artistically create an editorial. Um, and so I found that, well, this is, this is a lot of fun. I found myself saying, this is kind of fun. I am really enjoying um, hearing these stories of these women mm-hmm. and it's really impacting me when we were going through the editing process after we had everything put together and we were just reading the stories and looking at, you know, the layouts and everything, I was just reading it and just thinking, wow, this is so impacting just to me right here, right now. How can this be, this is going to be even more impacting to the women that end up buying this magazine and encouraging them where they are. Um, Like one of the things that led me into doing this magazine is like we talked about hardships. Um, sometimes you have to lose everything to gain everything. Mm. And I really believe that that was the starting point of dearly. Um, my daughter was diagnosed with autism mm. and I went through a really traumatic time. And through that traumatic time, I was at a point where I had nothing and I had to give everything to the Lord and just put my understanding in him. Mm. And one of the things he mentioned to me is like, I created you not just to be a photographer, 
you know, I created you to be a missionary. Yeah. This is your first calling. And so because of that first calling, let's get started on this magazine. So. Yeah. <laughs> and it's lovely that, um, you know, through that, you've, you've mentioned yourself that you've been so inspired uh, through the stories that you are sharing now with the, mm -hmm. with the world, with other women globally. And I'm sure you've received a lot of feedback from other women who have been reading these stories that it's yes. been impacting on their lives too. Share a little bit about some of the impacts that you've had and maybe even, you know, again, sharing a bit more of your story around the hardships because mm -hmm. not that we'd want anyone to go through hardships. Mm -hmm. If I look back through the hardships that I've been through and the challenges that mm -hmm. they really have strengthened in me areas and sometimes that I didn't even know needed strengthening. Uh, how did that you know, show up for you? And what are some of the things that you're hearing from other women? Because we can really learn and be empowered by some of these stories. Mm. Absolutely. Yes, I've had a lot of feedback from women. They have read these stories and they're just, like you said, just really impacted because they're hearing something that needs to be heard mm. in their hearts. Um, I think when we leave things to ourselves, I'm not saying that we need to do that publicly on a blog. It's, it's just how you're convicted. Like if you want to share it with somebody personally over coffee, that's just as impactful. But I've seen that when you're sharing these stories, it brings to light, you know, those struggles. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else out there that's reading it. And this is what's happening with these women. And they're reading it and they're saying, wow, you know, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. And I, I can overcome these challenges. I can do this. I can, these things that I've been going through, I can use them as a weapon against the enemy to overcome and impact somebody else with it as well. Yeah, um, so true. So true. Mm -hmm. you know, I think um, often now, when you look at society today, I mean, previously we used to live in large communities or communities mm -hmm. that really supported one another. However, I think often just with the busyness of life and of course business, and then if we've got children, so we're balancing a lot of balls in the air, we may not necessarily have communities where we can reach out or those deeper relationships with people we really trust and that we can share those things with. And so it's often really empowering for those who feel that they have gone through or experienced something and now can share that insight in the hope that it's going to provide some hope uh, yes. for others. And so what I often love to remind people of, it's something that you just said, and I'm echoing this, that they're not alone, they're not isolated. Mm -hmm. And because often we feel, and I think this is particularly for women and, and men too, but I know I'm a woman, so I can really see <laughs> authenticity and authority because from a woman's point of view, we can often think that it's only ourselves that have gone through mm -hmm. and, and we feel shame or uh, guilt or so, you know, other em emotions that keep us, prevent us from sharing and or journaling it or, or bringing it to prayer, obviously. Is that mm. something that you've found as, as well in, in the community of women that you're now building? Yes, it's something that, yes, incredibly, it's spot on. I have found yeah. that, I mean, when you share your story with somebody else, you just don't know what, how much it's impacting someone else beside you, you know, yeah. um, so it's just really important for us as women and like you said, men, you know, to come in as a community, especially with the things that have gone in, on in the world lately. I mean, I've been even more reminded how important it is to share those stories with the, you know, I don't know if you've heard here in the U.S. a few suicides that we've had of celebrities, you know, and it's just kills me to hear that, you know, and but it's so important to share our struggles um, because somebody else out there may be going through the same thing because you, I mean, I have overcome things personally. And when I've shared that, you know, someone's told me I needed to hear that, yeah, you know, sure. so it's just so important. So very important. And uh, that's why our mission uh, or one of our missions in, in the podcast network is to change the world one message at a time. Exactly. Sometimes I think, our own personal stories, we may feel, oh, well, who's interested in hearing that? Mm -hmm. But I think through sharing that and opening up and being able to have that conversation allows someone else to realise, well, if he or she has gone through that, maybe it's mm -hmm. possible for me too, which, of course, we absolutely yes. know. And because, uh, you know, the Bible reminds us that in our areas of weakness, 
and where we just fall to our knees, that's when God can really strengthen us and, and uphold us. Let's talk about impossibilities are possible. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? That's something that I learned in my, per, my personal life. I grew up in a small town and we didn't have much. I had two brothers and a sister. My mom was a janitor at the local school and she probably came home with a six, she was a single mom, $600 maybe a month, maybe to $800 feeding her children. Um, I thought a lot and prayed a lot. You know, I had a lot of dreams on my heart and the Lord, because let me just go back, step back a couple um, steps back in that. I had one person, and I really believe this is another way that God just implemented dearly into my heart about impactful stories and impactful people. I had one person reach out to me and told me about having a relationship with Jesus, what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And because she did that, just one person, she changed the course of my life. And because that changed the course of my life and my relationship with Jesus and seeking that, um, wanting to spend time with him, I started to see things differently and I started to chase things, the things that he wanted me to chase after uh, fearlessly. And I look back on my life and I look at the things that I've accomplished because of the Lord. And it's all of the impossibilities that I was told it would never be possible have come true. Yeah. Wow. Um, Amazing. And so Bring us back to that time, uh, because what I'm really interested in, uh, you said if that woman had not reached out and even planted mm-hmm. that seed, as you said, you could the whole trajectory or path that you took then took may not have existed. Were you already going to church? Was it someone that you already knew? How, how did you know her or come to know her? She was a classmate oh. and she was in my, my uh, grade. She was a classmate and we were more acquaintances than friends. And then just one day, she just turned to me and reached out and started showing interest. Yes. And I wasn't really walking with the Lord, I don't think, um, at that time. I was seeing the world through the world's perspective. Mm -hmm. I was seeing myself through the world's perspective. And I had given my life to Jesus when I was in second grade, but I had no one there to really show me to how to walk with Jesus, to have a real personal relationship with him and that he wanted that with me. And she took the time to do that. And that's one of the things that I love about dearly. Um, It's because just like I said, one person can change the course of your life and it only takes that one person to be impactful. Mm -hmm. And we often think being impactful, you know, we have to do these great huge things but that's not really true Uh, an impact starts so small mm -hmm. and it ripples and then becomes something so big yeah it can be um just as you said taking the time to listen to someone Mm -hmm. uh, build uh, a relationship if you will and be that trusted person and with integrity and be how jesus was as we know compassionate and open up the opportunity to be able to share a little bit more. And I think, you know, often when we are seeing someone who is struggling, sometimes it's hard to know what to say. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's where we pray and we ask, please help me, you know, share something that is going to be meaningful and really helpful. That yes. Too. But I love that. Impossible, impossibilities are possible. What would you say to someone if they are going through a really difficult time? Maybe they've just learned something about their family or something's Mm -hmm. happened to their business that really has had them have to take a step back uh, and completely evaluate what's going on. What were some of the things that you did that you found really helpful? Maybe there were some Bible verses that you really clung Mm -hmm. on to as well. Mm -hmm. I think... Some of the Bible verses that I've clung on to are Psalm 1-1, mm-hmm. uh, 1 through 3, actually. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked or stands in the way of sinners or sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he meditates on that day and night. He is like a tree planted. You know, I love that part. He's like a tree planted by the streams of water that yield its fruit in season. Mm-hmm. And so I love that verse because it, it reminds me what it's all about. Mm-hmm. 
that it's all about him. It's not about myself. It's all about seeing the world and my situations and my circumstances, my hardships through his eyes and not mine, because it's really easy to start seeing these difficult times through the world's eyes. Mm. You start asking why, and that's not, that's okay. It's okay to ask the Lord why, Mm. Um, as long as you come back, because he wants to see you. He wants to hear how you're really feeling. He doesn't want you to sugarcoat it. No, he and would rather you be real. <laughs> for you to share that, you know, as he, he knows our deepest uh, mm-hmm. thoughts. And so that verse, as you said, really held, held you in respect. If we look back now through really keeping connected with him, as you say, to really leaning into him, how are you now feeling strength-wise, uh, you know, with your daughter? What, how's, it, how's that now panned out for you? Really <laughs> I think every time that I start feeling low with her situation, I have my highs and I have my lows. Um, I look back at these verses. I look back at what he's done in my life. And I, like I said, I try to like look through his perspective because it's so easy to just to fall into that. Um, Raising her requires a lot, a lot of therapies. I take her five days a week to a therapist, um, different therapies, you know, occupational speech. We even do dance therapy, which she absolutely, she just loves it. Um, so I just try to look back, you know, to remind myself the word is so important. Mm -hmm. It's vital to remembering and spending time with Jesus. And that's one of my biggest challenges right now, Mm -hmm. raising her and my son, and spending time with Jesus and because I'm so tired at the end of the day or it's hard to get up early. I'm not a morning person. I've asked the Lord to make me a morning person, but he has said no. <laughs> so. oh, that's, and um, so thank you for sharing because I think sometimes, you know, uh, when we are faced with those challenges, it can be really difficult to to just take that, you know, step in front of the other and that's just sometimes to get ourselves out of bed to, to face the day. But I think knowing that every single thing happens because of his will and that, you know, for some people aren't Christians say, well, why does God do that? You know, sometimes we don't know the answer why. And as you say, if you're doing that, you've been able to strengthen your relationship with him. Now um, have gotten the support that you need for your daughter and you know, with that community and being able to have a supportive even around with the family can make such a difference and you now have no idea um and maybe being called to really impart um support knowledge insights to mm. others who are going through that as well we just don't know mm. sometimes when we're in the midst of the learning and growing it can be difficult but often when we turn and we look from where we've come and what we've learned and and what's happened and the people we've been able to impact we can really see uh, how he's been playing out in our lives and so you've said that let's talk about as a business owner we've been promoted or created to promote the maker and not ourselves or our brand what did you mean by that Well, that kind of goes into my story with being a wedding photographer for about 10 years. My husband and I, we've been, we were called to be missionaries and, but God kept closing the door. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you called us to be missionaries, but he kept closing the door and closing the door. And then, um, so I was praying about it. Well, what am I to do next? Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to start, you know, learning photography. And that was another scary moment for me, but I, I did it. I started learning. I started teaching myself how to do it. I perfected my craft Mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. And for the first few, I mean, I still enjoy it, but for the first few years, I was just like all about it, you know, growing in it. And it was just so fun. But then one day I started realizing that I was dreaming about photography I was thinking about it in the morning. I was thinking about poses. I was thinking about sessions, dream things that I would love to do as a photographer, which there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I felt was wrong with that was it was constantly on my brain. Mm. 
And the Lord just convicted me, especially after, you know, my daughter was diagnosed. He said, this has become an idol to you. And it's not something I wanted to admit, you know, and it's like, this has become an idol and you've begun to just promote photography, to promote your business, to be about self, you know, and not about, about me. Mm. Um, you need to be kingdom minded. You need to be, you ha- need to ha- have a kingdom minded business, a kingdom minded heart. Mm. And I really feel like after my daughter's diagnosis, it was a big humbling time for me to really yeah. just accept that. Wow. You know, as you're sh- saying that, I, I um, found a verse the other day mm-hmm. and I think I've mentioned this previously uh, on one of my other shows but for me it was so um, insightful and almost like a, a mission statement if you, you will but it says everything that you could you have just reminded us of and it's Romans 12 verse 11 and mm, I think I know what you're talking about, about so the, the zeal and fervor it's like do not lack I'm trying to find the the one that I read, but anyway, here's one that's um, BSB. Do not lack diligence, mm-hmm. be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. So basically, we're saying, look, be passionate about your work, but mm-hmm. make sure that you know the core of you leaning into Him, that He is very much first person. Mm-hmm. And so it's uh, great that we can be, as you said, we can be really mm-hmm. enjoying our work and committed and doing the right steps. But if we can yes. to replace that and, and turn that into everything mm-hmm. that we live for, that's when it can certainly get dangerous. So what were some of the things that you started to do to help you ensure that it was always keeping Christ good? Um, I started to just go back to the basics, mm-hmm. you know, one of the verses that comes to mind is, you know, you know, that he's my first love. He, he needs to be my first love. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what verse that is, but it's in the Bible, just paraphrasing. Yeah. Um, and I needed to get him to be my first love. Mm-hmm. So just getting a right mindset, the mind is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Just getting a right mindset, because when you, your mind is right with God, it, comes down to those emotions and then the emotions start to get right you know because the lord is the one that's leading it and and you're not leading it in any way um and so i really started to go back to like it's about him it's about spending time with jesus it's about getting back to what he wants not what i want so starting to ask him those questions and that's one of the things that i love about how dearly came to be is he's the one who gave me all these ideas. Um, I had to pull over at the side of the road when he gave me the slogan, creating and cultivating an atmosphere of impactful women. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I want it to be three, I want, no, sorry, two sections. I want it to be impactful stories Mm -hmm. and I want it to be impactful business. And I love, because we've just been talking about business and about, Mm -hmm. you know, trying not to self-promote ourselves and instead promoting the maker, promoting him and using our businesses to impact people in a positive way. And so that's how he brought that idea to um, impactful businesses. And so we seek out impactful businesses, women that are using their businesses, that are impacting other people in their communities and the world. Mm -hmm. And I've just loved seeing that and reading all the interviews. And Mm -hmm. because I want younger girls to see that. And I want those girls to see these women and be like, that's my hero. Yeah, you know that's I my year. That. It's so important, and I think um, you know we can learn so much from one another. And you know, about business, it is we're building kingdom businesses as Christian mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, and uh, we may not openly share the gospel. Yet I think mm-hmm. our actions, our interactions, our behaviour, how we respond to people, speak volumes. And exactly. Uh, know how we interact that way can really open the door to to an opportunity where we can share more Um, and I think you know if we go forward always knowing that we are ambassadors for Christ Mm -hmm. perfect exactly acting and interacting I had a situation this morning and I just had to (laughs) move myself because I thought this conversation is not really going where um, (sighs) I want and you know and sometimes we just need to then Three to agree and then move on, you know. Exactly. Um, every action, as you said, is 
um, going to be an example of how Jesus would want us to be. Share a little bit more about how people can read about uh, more about Dearly, how they can subscribe. What's the best way for them to do that, Dave? Um, right now, they can go to www.dearlymagazine.com and they can learn about the magazine, the mission. They can um, go to the shop and order the magazine. Mm -hmm. It's called the Revive Issue. And so right now we're just pretty small. You know, we started with 200 copies. We did a Kickstarter, you know, we did all that stuff. And it's like putting my faith in that the Kickstarter didn't make it. So I was like, well, Lord, where do you want this to go? He's like, have faith. I will provide. <laughs> and so he ended up providing enough to, you know, print at least 200 copies. And I've really loved seeing like the feedback of these women um, it's gone all over the states in the United States. Um, it's gone to Georgia, Missouri, Washington, D.C. I'm just saying this off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Hawaii, California. And then we had the privilege of mailing one to Northern Ireland. So I was really excited about that. Yeah, it's exciting. It really is exciting. And I'm sure now that you are starting to see the impact you are having on the lives of the women not only who are reading it but I guess contributing to it because there's something yes. very empowering when you share stories and creating mm -hmm. in which you read other people's stories too that can be incredibly healing but that our work that we are creating in our businesses and the creative projects and opportunities mm -hmm. that's our mission field we exactly impact the lives of hundreds if not thousands and now of course you're on uh, the show here and who knows where this message is going to go and whose life it is going to, to continue to impact. This is our mission field. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have, I couldn't have done it. I'm going to make, make a big, huge shout out. I could not have done it without my friend, Lindsay Laval, who's a graphic designer, the most talented woman I have ever encountered. And this could not have happened without her. Yeah. So that's another thing I think which is so incredible is that often we are a little hesitant, sometimes, not all of us, sometimes we can mm -hmm. be a little bit hesitant to collaborate with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think now we, when we see, when we combine our unique gifts and strengths, we can create an, an, a product or an offering or a service that far outweighs mm -hmm. what we could do on our own. And exactly. It's much more fun when you get to collaborate with awesome people who you love, trust, and admire to be able to create knowing that together you impacted uh, so many people. Yes, I could not have done it with all these amazing women. And that's what Dearly is about the community of women coming together to do impactful things. And I mean, there's, I just could not have done it. I mean, here it is. <laughs> It's beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. When you have, when you hold that product in your hand, that mm -hmm. final finished, completed product, um, there's a real sense of um, accomplishment. But I think knowing, as you said, that it's tied into something that you really feel um, that you inspired to do. You know, uh, through, through uh, the yeah instructions and the guidance in in the Lord. Mm -hmm. that, that just yes, yeah, it's humbling. I think, isn't it? So yes, that's it. That's exactly how I would say it. It was very humbling just to see it, hold it in my hands and see it. And even when the boxes arrived, yeah. I still don't feel worthy of this, but yeah. hey, I'd rather feel like this and not know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, than to just feel so confident and not trust in the Lord. You know, I'm. Yeah, there's just, a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Mm -hmm. and, um, and absolutely, I, I think um, it just makes it so much fun when we're collaborating with God because he's got it all planned out. We just need yes. to trust and follow, take the next step, the next step, the next step. Uh, Daisy, it's been so much fun speaking with you yes. today. May I just uh, close the show off with a word of prayer for you? Yes, and, thank you. Yeah, fantastic. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to speak with Daisy today. And you know, Lord, sometimes when we're going through struggles in our life, whether it be in our business or in our personal life, it can be really difficult, Lord. But we're just reminded through the testimony that Jesus shared today that when we lean into you, when we turn to the word, when we commit it to prayer and just be so honest and open with you, Lord, that you are there to lift us up, to strengthen us and to really help us continue moving forward so that your will be done. 
Father, we just want to thank you for the blessings and the impact that Daisy and her team, and Lindsay, uh, who's the graphic designer, um, but just the product that they've created with their magazine. Father, for the women who contributed their stories, just through reading those and the women that you impacted, we just want to thank you for that. Because as we said today, we are not alone. We are loved beyond a love that so many people who are not Christians don't get realized. But Father, I just really want to pray to you today that you'll take this message and share it with those people who don't feel loved, who haven't yet realized that um, you love them so much that you gave your only son's life up so that we could live in eternity uh, with you. Father, just continue to uphold and bless the business that uh, Daisy's creating with her magazine and, of course, the women that participate with you. We ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing. Thank I think you. it's such a um you know inspiring that sometimes you know we don't know what the next step is going to be we haven't completely planned out our vision but we've certainly trusted and we will certainly guide guide our path so thanks so much for coming on the show thank you it was a pleasure meeting you You've been listening to the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast, brought to you by BeTheDifferenceMovement.com. Changing the world one message at a time. Do you feel called to influence real change with your message? Join our supportive community of like-minded influencers, thought leaders, and disruptors at www.BeTheDifferenceMovement.com. That's BeTheDifferenceMovement.com.